Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Talks with Tony. Gonna dive right in, have an email from a young lady today. And it says, hi, Tony, God bless your work. Good job. Hey, thank you very much. I am married eight years, but it has been a constant battle. To be honest, my main reason for staying married is because I don't want to disappoint God. I also have kids from a previous relationship and I also have kids in this relationship and I cannot bear to break their hearts. There is also a stigma when people know you have different baby daddies. They don't care what the story is. My husband is very jealous of me. He admitted this. He is also very insecure. He does not want me having friends. I could understand male friends, but he does not want me to have female friends as well. He is manipulative, manipulative. Y'all got my country tongue rolling on me. I don't know if it's a healthy marriage. I don't know if I should stay and make it work or if I should leave. He is very negative and always feels sorry for himself. He says no one wants him around them and no one loves him. His family members are not close to him. They hardly even talk to him. He wants it to be just me, him and the kids. What should I do? <laughs> Whoo. Now, this is a hard one. This is a hard one. Mm. So I have to start with the first sentence. It's a personal choice. That's, that's my disclaimer. It's a personal choice. Me personally, me personally, um, I would be out of there. I would be out of there. And here's my reasoning. I would not stay married because I'm afraid to disappoint God. God is an all-knowing, all-understanding God. He's bigger than me. God knows my heart. If I leave a marriage, God knows why I'm leaving that marriage. If, that, if I'm leaving and that is a sin, God forgives sin. God forgives murderers, adulterers, um, idolaters. God forgives. So if I am in sin for leaving a toxic, broken marriage, I will ask God to forgive me if I have sinned and I will repent in my heart and I will accept that forgiveness from God. So that's not a reason that I would stay. And I believe a lot of people stay because of that. You don't want to break the kids hearts. I totally get it. And I've seen many, many people stay for the kids. Um, I don't know what it would have been like had my dad left my mom or my mom left my dad. They had their issues. They had their situation, their fallouts, you know, trust issues and all of that. And it happened, you know, before the marriage even started. And then during the marriage, you know, they had issues that could have led to divorce. But my father stayed. You know, and typically if a man's going to try to do right and the man is going to be bearable and he's going to be a good man, it's not, a woman's not going to make him leave or a woman's not going to leave him. And so my father was a good man and he matured and he did what he had to do to be a good man and a positive role model for my sister and I. And then after we after he had raised us, then they went through a divorce when I was probably around 20 21, my sister, you know, 18, they went through a divorce. And then as I talked to them, they really, they told me the marriage was over year one or year two. But my dad was like, I couldn't see another man raising my children. You know, I had to stay there and make it work at least for that time. And so I was like, okay, hey, I respect you for that. And that's what made me grow up to be a man to say, look, I'm going to raise my kids in the home. I told my mom, mom, if I get a prostitute pregnant, I've never slept with a prostitute, but I told her, if I get a prostitute pregnant, I'm marrying that woman and I'm raising, I'm raising my child because I refuse to have, you know, a child that I brought into the world grow up without me active and present in his or her life. 
And so that's not what's keeping me with my wife. I absolutely love her and our marriage is absolutely perfect. A lot of people don't want to hear that, but I 100% mean it. You know, I 100% mean it. I don't even know how to lie. I'm too honest. You listen to all my videos. I tell too much business. I say too much. I wouldn't know how to lie about a, a, a bad marriage. And so I'm here not just for the kids, but for love. You stand for the kids. Listen to me. Listen to me. If my wife cheat on me, you know, or do something crazy, I find out she's stealing, you know, a bunch of money. She's taking money out of the account and putting over in a little side account you know, planning something to leave or something. I find out, you know, she lying every day, lying about all kind of stuff or, you know, something crazy. My son's beautiful, handsome, smart, articulate. I'm out of there. I'm out of there. And I know that's a um, contradiction to what I just said, but my point was is I won't leave because of me. I won't be irresponsible and leave a relationship because I don't want to accept my responsibility. But I'm not going to stay in a marriage that's toxic or abusive, you know, that's isolating. And I can't trust the person. I'm not going to stay in that. I will be there for my kids. And in that situation, I might even fight for custody. At the least, I'm going to settle for the least I'll settle for is 50 50 you know or whatever you would call it where i get every single weekend and the whole summer that's the least i'll settle for but so you stand for the kid what i need you to understand is that children it hurts them and i see it you know with, with young grade school kids they act out when their parents go through a divorce you know i see it they act out initially but if the parent they're staying with is strong and solid and picks up 100% and stands their ground. A lady asked me yesterday, Tony, what do you see? What's the trend you see in coaching um, with women? You know, like who struggles the most? Because she said, I had a dad in the home. I, he was my stepfather, but he was a father figure. And he was in my life, but I'm struggling in relationships. I said, to be honest with you, the woman that I see do the best in the relationship is the woman who was raised by a strong single mother. A woman who was raised by a strong single mother, to be honest with you. And, and if I really look at it, um, that's true for a lot of men too. I mean, men, I mean, we just a different case. You, you, a man could have had 10 parents. If you could have 10 parents, a man could have had 10 parents in the home and we still act a fool in relationships. We just a different case. But I remember when I lost my virginity, I'm in a two parent home, mother and father. I lost my virginity at 15. I talked to my friend and he wasn't getting him none. And I said, man, why you ain't getting you none? And he said, my mama told me to keep my pants zipped up. I say, what? You in the ninth grade, I'm like, you grown. And you listening to your mama? Cause your mama said, cause your mama said, Keep your thing in your pants. That's why you ain't getting none. He said, yeah, man, you know, my mama told me, man, I want to listen to her. That's my mama. She know better than me. I'm like, whoa, he was raised by a single mom. She eventually got married, but his mom had the influence in his life. Guess what? He moved with his dad, single dad. Me and my boys went up to visit him. His dad allowed us to order a stripper. We was in high school. His dad allowed us to order a stripper at the house for $75. You know, it was, it was wild to say the least. That's what his dad did. The boy started drinking, drinking in high school, getting drunk. He started getting high. I mean, whole life changed. He, just, he became a thug. He went from this good, respectable young man to a thug. I was like, wow, but that's a big difference from being living with your mom to living with your dad. So I say that to say your children, if you are a strong, responsible parent, my wife told me she left me two months into marriage when I went back to the street life and she left me. I asked her how you had the strength to walk out. We just had a baby. He's in the intensive care unit. 
and you're going to leave me for wanting to sell a little bit of weed to put some food on the table. You're going to leave me for that? I ain't cheat on you. You ain't find a woman in my phone, catch me having sex. What in the world? You leave me for, how did you leave me over that? She said, I was raised by a single mother and my mom got married around the time of high school. And she said, one day my mom woke me up and said, hey, Tony, uh, hey, Cherie, get your stuff. We leaving. And she said, I saw the moving truck pull up and packed up all our stuff and we left because she had got married, but it was toxic. She said, when I saw her do that, that let me know, don't ever put up with anything from, from a man, husband or not. Love yourself first and be willing to walk away. A strong mother taught her that. I say that to say, for all of y'all women trapped in a relationship for the sake of kids, kids are resilient. God made them resilient for that very reason. Because God knew kids would lose their fathers to war, lose their fathers to divorce, lose their mother to, you know, the mom giving birth, cancer, you know, illnesses. I have a lot of guys who lost their mother, you know, to cancer, you know, things you go through and they bounce back. They bounce back. They go on to be productive citizens, to live a good life because God gave them a resilient heart as a young man, a young woman. So understand that. It may be some things the kids say, oh, I want y'all to be together. I mean, my oldest son, he just terrified of divorce. He, we can't even say the word around him. Like when we talk about another family or we talk about other people, he's like, look, don't say that word. Don't say that word. He is just terrified of it. So I know it would really, 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 really hurt him. You know, if my wife and I got a divorce, but I also know either he, whether he's with her or me, because of we're responsible adults, he would heal and he would still grow, go on to be successful. So I share that for everybody who, you know, you're struggling with this. Don't allow marriage to be a death sentence. Now, as far as your husband... What I would recommend is that you tell him he has to get life coaching. He needs to talk to me or somebody like me. What I mean by that, somebody who has experience, who has who has drawn wisdom from their experience and somebody who's going to keep the blood raw, somebody who's going to give it to him like an IS is, somebody going to, you know, read him from head to toe, listen to him, hear him. Ask them good questions, deep questions that's going to really make them think. But that has to be mandatory for you to stay with him. If you're going to stay with him, him getting help has to be mandatory because he sounds like he's trying to hint on some depression here. Nobody love him. Nobody wants to be with him, around him. No one loves him. And he always negative and feeling sorry for himself. He hinting on some, some, some depression. Um, it could also be as simple as just him attention seeking and just all his insecurities making him act this way. But it could very well be depression. And so it's mandatory that he gets some help. And if he won't get any help, if he gets help, he can grow, he can change. Because what changes us is just getting new knowledge. When you get new knowledge, you replace the old things, you do new things, you get new results. He can grow he can change. Y'all can ride into the sunset and live happily ever after. But you have to stand up as a woman and you got to put your foot down and you got to say, look, I'm not your slave. I'm not your prisoner. I'm going to have friends. I'm going to have girls night out. I'm going to do that. If you can't handle that, then you can leave. You got to keep it real just like that. And you got to tell him, look, if for us to continue, you're going to have to get some help. And then you got to be his life coach, too. And you got to speak into his life and you got to speak positivity into his life. You got to shut down that negativity. When I get down, when I'm feeling down and, you know, in my feelings, my wife, she speaks into my life. She lifts me up and in words, they pierce to my heart and it gets me back into a good mood. So I spend five minutes, you know, feeling down because she sees that she jumps on it and she speaks some piercing words to my heart, a piercing truth. And that's what you have to do as a wife. Don't let him wallow in his mess. 
and make him get help. When my wife took me back after leaving me, um, she was gone for three days. It was the worst three days of my life. That's why I created the 72 hour rule. And um, I wrote about it in my book, Mrs. Writing, in my next book that me and her writing together. That was the worst 72 hours of my life. But when she came back, she demanded. She said, in order for me to be back with you, you got to get anger management, you know, or life coaching. Well, basically anger management because we didn't even know of, what, of life coaching then in 2007. And the reason why is because when she trying to walk out, I tried to hold her. I tried to hold her. We ain't had no furniture in the living room. So she pulling this way, I'm pulling that way. We end up falling on the ground. And I'm over there holding her. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. I wasn't trying to hurt her or nothing like that. But her point was, if I'm trying to walk out, you don't got the right to touch me at all. So since you um, tried to hold me and we got into a tussle and we wrestling and you got to get anger management. And so I, I signed up for coaching. Fortunately, I, she, she let me sign up with my father. And um, but she demanded that she also demanded you got to get in the church. You got to start going back to church. You got to rededicate your life to Christ. She demanded that. She also demanded you got to cut off your friends, them toxic friends that's giving you the drugs to sell, that want to take you to the club, to holler at the ladies. You got to cut them off. I did all three of those things, and we in a 100% happy marriage today, 12 years of marriage. That was in the first two or three months of our marriage that, that we went through that. So I'm here to tell you, he can change. You got to put your foot down. Don't discount or overlook the power of a woman's influence. So if you're gonna stay, create a bed that you're willing to lie in. If you're not willing to lie in that bed, then you need to leave. Hey, thank you so much for your question. If you have a question for me, please send it to inbox at tonygaskins.com. We'll talk soon.